Who spend most of their day at a desk for work? Just a quick show of hands. All right. And how many folks spend much of their time when you're not at a desk using a smartphone or a tablet or some sort of device like that? Some are kind of like hesitant about that one. Uh, okay. And how many of you folks see your kids doing much the same thing before they've even left high school? Any? Okay. All right. Yeah, indeed. Um, things have definitely changed here. We've gone from Vietnam being very much about uh, playing football and working as farmers out in the field to working at a desk and spending time on, on digital sports. Now, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but I'm saying it's new. And because it's new, it requires a little bit of attention, an open mind to not just the possibilities, but again, the challenges that can come along. All right, so what kind of challenges are we talking about? They're very small, maybe you don't experience them that much, and maybe we tend to think that they don't really mean too much in the long run. But there's an idiom in Vietnamese that basically translates to running water will erode stone. That means small damaging effects can add up over time, even enough to break down stone. Small damaging effects like spending eight hours on a chair that's not adjusted for you, or spending your day all the time typing, or perhaps spending much of your day with your neck craned down to look at a screen that's not at the right height. These things add up. And the ways that humans erode have different names. There are many different ways. But I only want to talk about three common ones that tend to be associated with this new desk-based way of living and doing business. The first is something that's called upper cross syndrome, which is basically when you have an imbalance of muscles up through the neck and the upper back that can come from, again, looking down at a screen there. Uh, the consequences of that can be fatigue, it can be headaches, it can be all around not pleasant. The second thing, repetitive stress injury, comes from repetitive actions, which causes stress, um, and that can result in uh, numbness or even burning or shooting pain through different joints. The third thing, perhaps the most famous one of the lot, is carpal tunnel syndrome. That's something that can cause similar symptoms to RSI, the repetitive stress injury, and can even be bad enough that they disrupt an individual's sleep. We usually think of it right here at the wrist, but really it's just when a nerve that runs anywhere from the wrist up to the neck gets compressed. Some people think that, indeed, poor posture can again cause that kind of compression. Now, I don't know about you folks, but I tend to not do my best work when I'm sleep deprived, when I have a headache, and when I've got shooting pains in my hands. That being said, if we want to do our best, I think it's worthwhile to spend a little bit of time and effort each day to try and combat these potential uh, situations. The first thing is that there's a solution to these symptoms. I mean, we don't just have to accept that that's, that's the new norm now. Secondly, to be able to deal with these symptoms, well, if you take 10 minutes a day, it adds up, especially over time. I mean, that's over an hour a week. Thirdly, mindfulness of your body can be quite helpful. Um, first thing we might be mindful of is our workstation. We tend to just sit at our desk. It was the desk that was given to us. Sit on the chair, the chair that was given to us. It's not really set up to our own individual physiology because everybody's different. First thing you want to look for is your screen set up in front of you so that way you can look directly at it or do you actually have to twist your neck in unpleasant ways for extended periods to be able to look down at it. Second might be your keyboard. Is it set up so the top part of your arms can hang comfortably vertically or are you doing more of a meerkat kind of situation at your desk? Third thing would be simply just your own posture throughout the day. That's one of those things we kind of tend to take for granted and forget about. So here's a quick trick to help you be mindful of your posture while you're sitting. Take a ball, maybe a tennis ball, hold it between your shoulder blades and hold it against the back of the chair. If you start to lean forwards and compromise your posture, the ball is going to drop and you have a clear reminder that you need to pay a little bit more attention to your spine. All right. A lot of talking so far, but why don't we actually do something physical? Um, we're going to go through a series of few different exercises, a few different stretches that maybe you can incorporate into your day to uh, help keep things mobile up top. Uh, I want to mention, though, that this list is not an exhaustive list, nor is it designed to be exhausting. It's just a few different things that maybe they're going to be helpful to you. Maybe they're going to be useful. 
So I'm going to ask you all if you'd like to stand up and participate. I'd like you all to go ahead and stand up. All right. Trust me, it won't hurt. Uh, before we actually get into it, I just need to say, folks, um, gee, a bit of a disclaimer here first. So if we're going to do this, I need you all to agree to this. So TEDx Hanoi, do you agree? I need to hear from everyone. TEDx Hanoi, do you agree? Okay, that sounds better. Okay, so our very first stretch here, uh, we're going to just stand natural, stand comfortable. We're going to look off 45 degrees to one side. We're going to tilt our chin down a little bit. We're going to take the front hand, put it on the top of our head. You should be thinking Michael Jackson. All right. This hand is not pulling. It just keeps our head from moving. We're going to take our free hand. We're going to lift it up, and we're going to reach down as far as we can, and we're going to hold it for a count of 10. Five, eight, nine, ten. Cool. We'll release. We'll look over to the other side, 45 degrees off to the angle. Back down. Michael Jackson. Shrug up with the other hand and reach back down like you're trying to reach the floor. You should feel a stretch in the side and back of the neck. Eight, nine, ten. Great. We're going to come back to center. Next thing, again, we'll take our right hand. We'll place it on the chest just so things don't move around at all. We're going to tip our left ear to our left shoulder, turn our chin to the right-hand side, and look up to the ceiling a bit. You should feel the stretch more on the inside of the neck. Eight, nine, ten, and release. We'll do the other side. Left hand on the chest. We're going to look up. Uh, sorry, we're going to tip our right ear to right shoulder. Bring the chin over. Look up. General advice when you're doing stretching and general good life advice, don't forget to breathe. <laughs> and back down. Okay, so that's going to be it for the neck uh, for us right now. Um, you might follow this up with some other stretches. You might work some chin tucks to work some of the deep muscles in there that tend to go weak when we have poor posture for, you know, the eight hours you spend at work, five days a week for 10, 20, 30 years, however long it is. Um, so we're going to move on to our hands and try to work on that whole carpal tunnel thing. Um, you know, just keeping it moving is one of the ways that's going to help avoid these situations. So first thing, we'll just take hands out in front. Try not to jab anyone. Don't hit anyone. Okay, cool. We're going to wrap our thumbs down. Cool, that looks good. We're going to wrap our fingers on top of it. All right, cool. And we're going to rock for five. So one, two, three, four, five. And that's it. Cool, we're going to let go. We're just going to tuck our thumbs in and out. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we're going to make circles one way. One, two, three, four, five. And the other way. One, two, and five. Great. Now we're just going to close and open for five. So again, one, two, three, four, five. All right. So it's pretty straightforward, some of these exercises. And uh, when you're doing them at home, the stretches you want to hold for maybe 30 seconds or more, these hand exercises, instead of five reps, maybe go for 15. We kind of cut it down because of time today, folks. Um, and I guess the takeaway message here is that as progress happens, as we work towards some brighter future that we hope to see. Yeah, we should focus on the great, new, fantastic, exciting things that come along. But it also is really helpful to be mindful of the maybe not so positive things so that we can deal with them, maybe in smaller steps, maybe 10 minutes a day after lunch each day, so that we don't have a larger problem down the road. And so I think since you're all standing, if I end it right here, I technically get a standing ovation. Thank you for your time.